There's something amusingly exciting about watching an ordinary looking dull car embarrass a shouty supercar. Even if you know that they pack a punch, seeing an underdog take the win will always spark joy. We call these unassuming fast cars the sleepers, and they're automotive equivalents of stealth bombers flying under the radar, but full of power. Hey guys, Stipe here with a list of my favorite sleeper cars ever. But first, check out my Ridge wallet made out of forged carbon fiber. That's the same material you'll find in the Sesto Elemento. Like the Lambo, it's light, sleek, and beautifully machined. They say it'll last you for a lifetime. It doesn't fold or bulge either, unlike my old wallet, which is crap. The Ridge takes all my cards and the cash, but it doesn't take up all the space in my pants. Finally, if you are also interested in a great slim wallet, you'll be happy to hear that the Ridge offers other colors and other supercar materials too, like aluminum, OG carbon fiber, or burnt titanium. Oh, that's hot. So go to ridge.com slash topcars and use the code topcars to get 10% off your order. You'll also get free shipping no matter where you are in the world and 45 days to test drive it. If you don't like it, you'll get your money back. That's like the best deal ever. Ridge.com slash topcars. Get your supercar wallet today. Number seven. Volvo is a synonym for safety, practicality, and no-nonsense cold Swedish design. Their 850 estate is a perfect example of these attributes. And as such, it's a vehicle of choice for boring people. Oh look, there goes Mr. Debens, my old geography teacher, trying his best not to overtake a snail with his bland Volvo. Hello, Mr. Debens. But then there's also the T5R, and later, just the R version, with a boosted five-cylinder. And that one is a very different animal. The so-called Turbo Brick was co-developed with Porsche, and as a result, it makes 250 horsepower and goes to 60 in less than seven seconds. That's pretty respectable for a 90s car, and still enough to dominate many kids in their abused fart cans. It handles well too, which is why Volvo used it as a base for their BTCC race car. Do you know any other race wagon? I sure don't. But the best thing about the 850R is that it still looks boring, other than some larger wheels and a front chin spoiler that looks like it was inspired by the great Kali. Not much else is there to tell you to back off. People will still think that there goes another geography teacher, but little do they know, this Mr. Debbins boned Miss Norris. And a couple of moms too. Number six. Wait, what's a Camaro doing on this list? Wasn't the whole idea of pony and muscle cars to be fast? Hardly anyone would be caught off guard by these. Well, in the case of the 1969 Copo, they still were. Most people looking for a race thought they were lined up against a regular Camaro. There were no Z28 or SS badges and no clear identifiers that there was anything special about it. For all they knew, this could have been the base straight six model. And then the lights went green. This was the Copa Camaro, a stripped down version with zero extras, except for the big boy 427 V8, which made more horsepower than any supercar of the day. Or to be precise, 425 HP. Only around a thousand Copos were made, and they had the designation number 9561. And then there was the number 9560. Same in every way, except this one had an all aluminum ZL1 engine that was developed primarily for Can-Am racing. It was more powerful, lighter, and with a proper tune capable of dishing out over 500 horsepower on the wheels. Only 69 ZL1 Copos were ever made, so the chances you'll run into one are slim, but never zero. And even if you do, you'll never know because there are no special badges to give it away. That's scary, and that's why a Holy Grail 9560 Camaro is on this list. Number 5 Okay, what car is this? Oh, it's the Saab 92X Aero. And what car is it now? Yep, the second generation Subaru Impreza WRX. And that's all you need to know. Number 4 but, Wait, how, why? Alright then. In the 2000s, GM was the owner of Saab, a troubled Swedish car maker that produced quirky cars and lots of losses. 
No matter how many times they were told to simply rebadge some of the existing GM models, Saab would always ignore them and spend huge amounts of money reinventing the wheel or something. So when it was time to release a new sporty model, GM was like, screw those guys, we'll just ask Subaru to rebadge the WRX. Smart move because had they left it to the Swedes, it'd probably cost enough to make a Bugatti. Anyway, the, the Japs were better at following orders and here's what they did. They changed the front and rear bumpers as well as the lights. So now the WRX looked a little bit more like a Saab. The interior received better acoustic isolation, a less shouty exhaust was installed and a few changes were done to the handling. But the rest was all Subaru, including the EJ255 engine and the all wheel drive, which was a first for Saab. As a result, the 92X Aero could do this. Which is something no one ever expected to see from a Saab. Number 4 Let's say you're a family man, a big family kind. Five kids, a wife, and throw in a golden labradoodle for a good measure too but you still like a bit of fun and speed in your life. What kind of car should you buy? The market says you should go for one of those many extreme SUVs like the Hellcat Durango or the Merc GLS AMG or any of the sort. All seven seaters and all do zero to 60 in under four seconds. But such cars are vile things, excessive, show-offy, thirsty, and just hateful. If you drive these, everyone will call you Dick, even if your name is not at all Richard. What you want then is this, the Mercedes R63 AMG, a hot rod minivan with a big ass 6.2 liter V8 and enough room for blanket, air, moon unit, tomorrow, and X Ash A12. These are all real kids names by the way. But because the R63 is a minivan, no one will give you an evil eye. Who would ever suspect this to be a 500 horsepower gas guzzler because after all, how many sporty minivans are there in the world? This and the two OPC Opals. All of which are rarer than panda bears, which is not enough to become a hated category. In the design too, it's timid. The R63 looks like a regular mommy's grocery getter, when in reality it's more of a daddy's secret bully that does 0-60 to 60 in 4.5 seconds. Number 3 Citroen is well known for their hydropneumatic suspension, which gives their cars unprecedented levels of comfort. Potholes, speed bumps, rough patches, truck grooves, none of that would be transferred to the body, which simply glides flat. Hell, you could even remove one of the wheels and still drive around. Without getting too technical, the suspension self-levels the car, no matter what. I just don't know why it took Citroen 60 years to realize that such a trait is good for a performance car too. Although not some Uber saloon, the Xantia Activa was a quick car thanks to the 190 horsepower V6, but more importantly, it also had the most advanced suspension ever fitted to any car ever. Active suspension, chassis control, anti-roll bars, undercarriage cross stabilization, it all meant that the Xantia wouldn't lean more than one degree, despite your best efforts to violently throw it around the bends. Compared to a regular car, that looks like this. Such body control also means that very little speed is shredded away when cornering. In the demanding moose test, where you have to quickly change the lane and go back again, like swerving around a moose, this unassuming French saloon still holds the record for the fastest speed ever recorded. Faster even than a McLaren or the Porsche. And Citroen was on standard 205 tires too. Simply incredible. If you see this car going down a very curvy road, just let it be. It can't be overtaken. Number 2 Most of you know that big luxurious cars come with big powerful engines because, after all, you need some grunt to move over two tons of leather and gizmos around. Naturally, even with all that power, no one thinks that they can outrun some real supercars. But can they? If instead of going for the regular A8, you go for the S8L, Audi's maxed out mothership, you'll get even more chrome, more legroom in the back, and oh, a 570 horsepower twin turbo V8, which according to car wow test, is good enough for zero to 60 in 3.2 seconds. 3.2, that's faster than the Hellcat, faster than a four-seater Ferrari GTC Lusso, faster even than the original R8 V10. And you don't even have to bother with doing all the racing, just go like, 
Excuse me, Alfred. Would you please smoke these fools? With pleasure, sir. Bloody hell. But the S8L is no drag racer only. Thanks to the all-wheel steering and electronically controlled air suspension, this ginormous Luxo barge can go around tight corners faster than any car this size and weight ever should. It actually leans into the corners, like super bikes do. Oh, and you can't rev it over 4,000 RPM when stationary. The soft limiter just won't let you. Talk about hiding its potential. Number one. Honestly, there couldn't have been any other car at the number one spot. Ever since the Model S arrived, people were blown away by the speed of these new electric cars. At first, it was interesting to hear that the electric saloon is faster than some sports cars, but then it kept getting faster until it was embarrassing most supercars too. And now, there's the Plaid version. Three motors, over a thousand horsepower, zero to 60 in around two seconds, and a quarter mile in low nines. It's the fastest mass-produced car in the world. Emphasis on mass-produced because Navera is also a thing. Anyway, for us petrol heads who watch every car video on YouTube, this is nothing new. We know the side effects of electric motors and their instant torque. It means blistering acceleration, no matter what the shape it comes in. But for the majority of people who still haven't experienced it, the Model S is just another four-door saloon. It was always sharp and beautiful, but nothing ever suggested what kind of performance lies within. And the same story goes for the new Plaid. It is still mostly the same. Compared to the long-range version, the fast one only gets a small lip spoiler. Nothing else. Even the slippery wheels remain, as the big ones are an option. So if you ask 10 people, which of these two is quicker? 9.99 out of 10 will still say it's the angry-looking, shouty supercar. And that makes the Model S Plaid the ultimate sleeper. And now three honorable mentions. Can you guess them? What are the other road-going stealth bombers you would include? Write down in the comments, like and subscribe, and if you wish to support the content that you love, check out my Patreon page. Okay, I've been Stipe from Top Cars TV, and I'll see you in the next one.